Do you want to become a VTuber? Mm -hmm. You're sick and tired of every how-to video saying the exact same thing? I sure am. <laughs> <sighs> Do you want a zero bullshit guide with someone who's actually tried and tested the applications to become a VTuber? Then look no further, as this just might be the video for you. This video will have chapters for you to select which type of VTuber you want to become. And to start things off... <coughs> the mainstream way of becoming a VTuber. I've pretty much seen every single video on how to become a VTuber. And do you know what every video has in common in regards to VTube Studio? That's right, that for the PC, it's free to use. Stop the cow! And if you think that it's also free for Android and iOS, <laughs> you are dead wrong. The application is free. However, if you're going to be using a webcam, then the price you'll have to pay is £11.39 to remove the watermark. You could probably go about your business by simply cropping it out or just leaving it there. If you want to collab, VTube Studio has a VNet multiplayer collab feature for £16.75. And if you're not going to be using a webcam but your phone, not only do you have to pay to remove the watermark, but you've also got a time limit of five minutes. That's probably enough time to make a YouTube short or a TikTok. But if you're going to live stream as a VTuber at minimum two hours, then this is fucking ridiculous. So if you want the advanced features of VTube Studio on the app, then just for the small price of $21.35, then you can have an unlimited time usage connecting your phone to the PC. As for plugins for better facial tracking and animations, I'm an Android user, so I have no experience in this. However, I saw that Sayu was using VBridge so she can make these facial expressions. Excuse me? Why do you guys keep hitting me? <laughs> so it'll all be worth it in the end. Just pay the fucking money. You dopey cunt. You have no maidens, no booty, and no doubloons. Wrong. Blunderbuss. When it comes down to the old reliable way of being a PNG tuber as a PC user, the obvious answer for a quick and easy way to do it is by using Fugitech or Fujitech. This has been every streamer's best friend and every VTuber's bestie as this would let the streamer have all of their friends on screen without all the hassle of making a bunch of browser sources on OBS or using screen sharing in Discord or some other screen sharing site slash application. With Fugitech, all you need is one browser source on OBS and you're sorted. Join a Discord voice chat and that's pretty much it. You can either use your Discord profile picture or use your own images and GIFs. It now has four image options, a speaking image, inactive image, muted and a deafened image for you to do whatever you want. All you need to do to get Fugitech is to log in with Discord, authorize access and you're in. There's also a bunch of other websites for both making a PNG tuber and making it react, but I haven't bothered looking into it. And in all honesty, you will most likely only use Fugitech. <laughs> Fugitech also has a premium version of it, which I don't have. To be honest, I don't, feel, I don't really think there's a need for it, to be honest, really. Which is $4.20 or $42 a year. And what it does is it basically gives you more slots, it increases the resolution, and it unlocks a quick model swap API, whatever that is. I personally don't need it. It's entirely up to you if you need it or want it. And I'll leave it at that. Nobody actually talks too deeply about how you stream as a VTuber on the Prism Live Studio app. VTubing is basically being a PNG tuber. You can either use what the app has for free or draw your own. Do note you have to draw a variety of facial expressions if you still want it to be like a VTuber with blushing, yandere, or angry faces, etc. If you don't have a tablet or software on your PC to draw, you can use PNG images instead. Or have someone else do it for you. The app has an annoyingly small keyboard when you paste links and title stuff for organising the screen sharing side of the app that you would use for live streaming games. The screen capture option for streaming has layers so you can organise it better than the VTube option which just puts everything on top of the PNG tuber. Even if you set the stream to vertical delivery or portrait mode, you still have to set it up in landscape mode. You can have as many pictures and web links as you want, but clutters the layers. So I would recommend you prioritise the necessary links and images, unless you don't mind scrolling all the way down to the bottom, just to get that one web link or image selected in the whole pile of mess you made. You can use your own music on the app, but do take into consideration copyright laws. The app has a library of non-copyrighted music for you to use instead, but you can just not use any music at all. I haven't tried having a video or GIF in the background yet. My phone overheats as it is with images. Speaking of which, if you have an old phone like I do that overheats really quickly, then either get a new phone or something to keep your phone cooled whilst you're live streaming. If you want to be a high quality PNG tuber, then you'll need a wire for both a mic and headphones or earphones to connect so you can have a better quality mic 
and be able to hear things like music or whatever without the mic picking it up. Not many people like the in the kitchen or bedroom live streams with music blasting on speakers and everything in your house being picked up, like your parents arguing about how much of a failure you are, <laughs> or them getting divorced soon. If you have a headset with a mic built in, then it's the wombo combo, you're sorted. Or you could do it on a computer instead of on the phone, like I'm doing right now. More and better options are there too, better control, etc. The YouTube Live sub counter pops up as a install studio box, so you're better off just using an alternative website instead. And you can only have up to four widgets on the VTuber side of the app. If you're fine with that, then it's all good. So after using the Prism app, I now know that I can't use it for live streaming. <laughs> My phone overheats, not even a minute after I go live. I can't even get away with only using one of the widgets, the chat box. It, the chat box widget is only used for if you want the viewers to see it. If not, then it's not needed. As you can see it on your phone screen, it picks up everything, every noise you make, every noise that happens outside, you name it, it picks it up chairs, cars, phone taps, the sound effects your phone makes, everything. My internet goes off and I think that's to do with the overheating rather than the app being the reason. I think it's just a safety thing but even if my internet gets cut off the phone still overheats like a bitch. <laughs> I honestly think that if you are wanting to be a PNG tuber who does vertical delivery or YouTube shorts live streams then you need a phone that's barely a year old or one of those ridiculously expensive gaming phones that are made to be used for gaming and live streaming. Again, my phone is like five years old. It's a Google Pixel 3a. I know most people will be using iPhones to do mobile streaming or VTubing as it's the only choice really for facial tracking and live streaming on apps such as TikTok and Prism Live Studio. So unless you've got the latest phone, cooling systems for phones and or a gaming phone, then I wouldn't recommend using this app or method to start live streaming. Honestly, you're just going to have to suffer with me and stick to making videos instead of live streaming anytime soon. <laughs> when I get a new phone, I'll give this app a second chance and try again. Who knows? Maybe you watching this video will be at the live stream when it happens. And by the way, the Prism Live Studio on PC doesn't have the VTubing option. It's basically like OBS except it has more options and features to mess about with. Whereas OBS, you'd probably need plugins for it. It does however have Spout 2 capture feature for capturing VTuber software in high resolution. It supports VC Face, VTube Studio and Warado, whatever the fuck that is. You should definitely have a tinker about with this face yourself. I didn't look into it too much for the PC as it's the mobile app that has the PNG Tuber feature on it and that was the main thing I was looking into. I only found this out after recording this by the way that the video function on the app is a limited amount of time so don't expect to be able to record an entire YouTube video out of it and that's pretty much it. Reality is an app that lets you create and customize pre-made models into whatever you want. From pasty ass white all the way to neon green, elves, animal ears, whatever clothes and hairstyles you want. The eyes and hair color can also be changed to whatever color you like. Something worth mentioning is that the app has a gacha system. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> There's a lot of either asleep or AFK streams. There was one stream that had like 100 people watching and it was an AFK model sat on a sofa. <laughs> I don't get it. There's also a lot of kids, so because of that, every stream you open that's 18 plus, the streamer will ask you for what your age is or insta ban you, even if you have it in your bio. Maybe the best way to describe the app is it's a crappy Sims game that lets you live stream as the Sim you created. You can even have up to three people join your stream call. They'll also be in your homeroom or world if you have it set to that. I've noticed that the Japanese side of the world that uses the app is rather good quality when it comes to not only the mic, but also when it comes to karaoke streams. It's like watching a Hololive member do a karaoke stream on YouTube. Over here in Europe though, or America, I haven't found one yet that's as high quality as Japan, in regards to microphones that is. There's a lot of interesting singers and voice acting going on. There's some nice people in there as well. But it was literally the first day I used the app and I was instantly witnessing drama. I don't know how, but if you can get your phone screen onto the computer, then you can green or blue screen your VTuber model and use it that way. Otherwise you'll only be streaming on the app itself. The notifications on the app is also set to whatever country that person is from. So if you're watching a Japanese person, it'll say in Japanese that it's your first time watching or liking the stream. But your message will be sent in your language. As far as I know, there isn't a translation feature on the app. Does the reality app have a PC version? No. It has a website and you can buy coins, but you can't use a PC version of the app to stream from. Does the reality app save past streams? No. If you want to save the stream, then you'll have to screen capture it yourself 
but have someone else do it for you. Can you earn money from the reality app? Apparently you can earn money on this app through the coin gift conversion, but you need like 2000 plus life points or something like that to make a transfer of real money. Allegedly. That's what I read on a Reddit post once. That's something you'll have to look into yourself if you decide to become a reality VTube streamer. The app also holds events, which is a form of entertainment and a way to help the content creators on there earn some money, an interactive way with the viewers too. However, I have no experience or correct info on this and how it works. So take what I say with a grain of salt and read the fine print for yourself on the app. In regards of what it's like to live stream on the reality app, I didn't give it a try because as you know, or well, if you don't know, if you skip that part, basically my phone overheats when I try to live stream on it. So I didn't bother doing it with this one because of that issue. Maybe in the future when I get a new phone, but until then, it is what it is. On to the next one. VR chat. I remember the early days of VR chat. Everyone that was playing was all in one server. Poke. Out here in Amish, smoking big doinks in Amish. And all the memes that came with it. I don't need to research, experiment, or experience this one as I have played VR chat religiously at one point in my life. And oh how far VR chat has come. The avatars look a little better than what they was in the past. It's still e-boys, e-girls and furries. The players are still 13 year olds saying the n-word, ERPers and traps. But you can find some golden nuggets here and there. <laughs> Big VR chat streamers are a thing, Gillian being a good example as she has a good quality avatar with a plethora of outfits all in one model. VRChat is the mainstream for indie VTubers when getting a 3D model. VTubers such as Coconuts, uh, This tastes like my dad's cum! Hannah Hyrule, Okay chat, time to milk you! <laughs> PP Sawyer, And even Vidal's AI Neuro uses VRChat for their 3D models. The only downside with being a VR chat streamer is that you'll be spending thousands of dollars on a VR headset, full body tracking, base stations, straps and all that shit. Even more so if you want to be a VR chat streamer like this little Filipino boy doing sick nasty flips and tricks. So unless you already have the equipment for VR, I wouldn't recommend it, but hey, it's your money, do as you will with it. There's plenty of models on VR chat that you can stream using, however there are people who don't want their avatars commercialized without being paid for it. Not everyone's lucky to yonky splank an avatar and get away with it. <laughs> There's also the free option of just being a desktop mode VTuber with VRChat, but I don't think anyone does that. My only advice if you're not going to use VRChat as a median, but you're going to stream VRChat, once you've made friends on there and they're on your streams, people don't want to be performing monkeys. They're not going to drop whatever they're doing to be your content. Don't use your friends for the content. <laughs> if they're your content, then what are you? You're just a cameraman. No personality. You're just a boring cunt. Oh damn. Oh damn. Oh damn! And maybe that's why I like Fillion. She doesn't have her friends be dancing monkeys on her stream. They're not the content to bring in her audience. She is the content. She is the dancing monkey. Well, <laughs> she's something that brings in an audience. VTubing with VRChat is basically using the camera and setting it to the green screen or going to a green screen world and window capturing it on OBS or whatever you're using to stream and record. And that's basically it. B Ride Studio. I'm gonna be freeballing this one because I don't have a script for it. <laughs> so basically, I did a live stream where I was using B Ride Studio for the very first time. Honestly, huge mad props to people that actually use this. Like Core of Midas, fucking hell. Humongous respect on you making your own model. Pretty much it. Because <laughs> it is such a pain in the ass, dude. It's so, like, there's like a huge learning curve, especially with it being new, and it is my first time, obviously, trying it out. So if you guys want to try out VRide Studio as a method to get your own free VTuber model, you can do that. It's a VR, you export it as a VRM model, and it's, at its I think it's the same thing as for, like, uh, if you want to do, like, MMDs or something like that. You know where, they, you, know where you see, like, 3D uh, VTuber streamers? where they have like their character doing like dancing and stuff like that for like the break screens or whatever. So I think it's kind of like that with it being a VRM. I'm not too sure about that. But uh, yeah, it's actually, it's rather interesting. It's kind of like, I found it after a while, it was very stressful messing about with hair. Very stressful. And especially with the skin tone, like, oh my God, I made, so I tried to get my skin tone 
not on this VTuber model, but on the image that you see down there, I tried to get that skin tone and hair colour onto the 3D model, and I ended up with like a, an inverted version of, you know them girls where they have like the makeup, where it's like they have a white neck, but their face is ridiculously orangey brown? I was like the inverted version of that. <laughs> I, had a, I was basically doing white face, okay? I was doing white face. I had like a white face, white ears, no details on the ears, and then tan body down below. <laughs> so it was kind of funny, it was kind of ridiculous. It was not bad. It was a shame about the stream dying halfway, but that's because my phone died. It is what it is. But anyways, back onto the subject, v, uh, v Ride Studio. There's also a V Ride Make, like Clove Maker. I haven't tried that yet, but that's a free option as well. This is all free, by the way. You can get this for free on Steam. There's also, uh, you can get like an application on your tablet or your phone. Obviously, I would recommend, I would highly recommend you get it on a tablet for the, like the finer details with the ears, the eyes, like the eyelashes, whatever. And like, just, just like the details of the face in general, I would recommend because I did it with mouse and key and it was a struggle. <laughs> I was, like, look at this right there. That's the eye. The first attempt, mouse and key. I was fucking struggling, dude. Oh my god, it was so awful. <laughs> I did manage to get it in the end, near enough, but it was so bad. It was kind of horrifying too when I found out that you could just erase the face <laughs> and there's just nothing there. Like, that was really funny. That was, that took me by surprise. Like, I, I didn't know I honestly wasn't expecting that you just click one thing and then that's it, the face is just gone. It just disappeared. Or like, I think I do it here. Yeah, I did it right here. <laughs> a chunk of the face just started going missing. It was very fun though, very fun. You should definitely give it a try if you want to do a, if you want to be a 3D VTuber that is actually. If you want to be a 3D VTuber, it's got its own uh, like default faces for both male and female. I don't know why, but they've labeled the female and male as femme for female and mask for men like masculine i don't get it and there's not a oh my god there's not a lot there's there was so many fucking dresses and frilly dresses and it was just women's clothing or like little boys like shorter clothing you know where they have like the shorts with the blazer on the top it was a sort it was a sort of it was this kind of clothing that midas likes i'm bringing her a lot but she was in the stream when it like she just popped in for a little bit basically saying gambare <laughs> There's not a lot of clothing, so you definitely need a V-Ride clothing maker, the the like the add-on, whatever it is, to make your own clothes. I think, or just go, just have like a have a Boost account. I think it's called Boost, and just and just download some clothing that you like the look of, because there's not a lot of options for men on this, on well on the default application of itself, anyways. But it's definitely worth a try if you want to try and uh, you know make it yourself. If you want to make your own avatar, I would definitely recommend if you want to try and make your own avatar. It's definitely worth it. I think. Just have a little tinker about if you don't want to like try and spend money on it but there is plenty of like places that you can spend money into having someone make the avatar for you if you want it to be actually good quality and decent and have like the physics for the hair and everything work otherwise you're just going to be spending a lot of time and effort and hours figuring out how to get it to work <laughs> and how to get it going but it's definitely i mean it's like that anyways in general when it when it comes to making vtuber models regardless of if it's 2d or 3d and same same for png you know if you're going to be drawing your own then you need to have obviously that's like some sort of skill and a lot of hard work and effort into making it will i be keeping this avatar mm, i mean i did export it it is it can be used to some degree i think <laughs> i haven't looked into it properly yet but will I, maybe in the future, I would definitely like to spend my own free time trying to figure it out for myself and make my own if I if I don't find someone to, to do it for me or get the money for it anyways. So I'll definitely try to like make my own, obviously a better version of this, way better version of this because I was just doing this with the stream to experience it and to give you guys a little know-how, a little heads up on, oh my god, here we go with the clothes. What, what is with the clothing? Right there. It's just primarily women's clothes, shorts, ridiculous. I refuse to let my boy be in a maid dress, okay? I'm telling you now, he will not be wearing any dresses. Do you understand? <laughs> but definitely give V-Ride a try. Or just spend money on someone else to do it for you. <laughs> uh. saw nothing. There's also alternatives for making your own VTuber model, such as VTuber Maker and Narikiri VTuber.
Both of these are also free to use on Steam. I haven't tried these out yet as I was thinking of streaming these two at some point in time. So if you try them out, let me know down below in the comment section. As for how to use a VRoid model for streaming, you'll need either V Magic Mirror or VC Face. I'll also leave a link to a video down below about it. <laughs> Literally any one of these things that I talked about is enough to become a VTuber. Just doing one of these things is more than any VTuber will ever do in their lifetime. <laughs> it all just depends entirely on what you're capable of doing right now and or which one you'd prefer doing. If this video helped, like, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.